<gasps> Hello. <laughs> How are you? How are you? I mean, it's you're like a you're. To be here. Oh my god, you're. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen someone so chic and fabulous for a, a live chat. Of Meanwhile, I was just telling everyone like, I mean, if that's what, I mean, the iconic moment of fashion, COVID, COVID fashion. <laughs> you know, you have to come correct. I'm talking to Jason Bolton, the celebrity stylist. I can't come half stepping, you know? No, I listen, this is, this is, this is again, again, and I, I was just briefing everyone on like, I do these chats with people who have shifted the, the planet for me and gave me the idea of possibility. And I want to be able to introduce people like that who are in my head, my mentors, my muses, my, my visions of possibility. And Deborah, you are that. You are, <laughs> you are, as a as a little brown boy growing up in the Midwest in America in the Midwest, I I remember seeing this image of you and I was like, what the I wish at that time I was I probably couldn't swear, but in my head I was probably like, what the fuck? And it was what just, planet is she from? <laughs> it, literally, literally. But all like all I wanted to know is I wanted to I wanted to put on a space suit and get to your planet. I wanted I wanted to get there. But you, what you did for me, and I don't know if you recognize, but what you did for a fashion and also people that look like you, you gave them opportunity and you gave them this, this lane and this door to make it possible for them to get to fashion. And you, for me, you, you let me know that there was a place for me in that world. So I go back to you a lot of times as references. I show your photos to like, the Yaras of the world, the Ava DuVernay's of the world. I show all those girls and we're all like, hey. how can we do that? Like, you're always my, you're always my Met reference. Every time oh, yeah. I, yeah. Like last year I had, last year I had 13 or 14 people at the Met and you were on everyone's board. So <laughs> it's just, I mean, from Serena Williams to, you know, to Zazie Beats, like it was all of them, but Anyway, that was just, I want to first thank you. I'll say thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for just th this thing. <laughs> oh, no, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Well, thank you for reaching out to me. This is my very first Instagram live interview. <laughs> I am a quite discreet person. And so it is a pleasure to be here with you and to just get to know you and your work is incredible for me too. And some of the people that you work with, I'm like, oh my gosh, hey Taraji. You know, all the people you work with. Like, <laughs> so oh my God. My picture as your mood board. I mean, this is, you know, it reminds me of Galliano where he does this mood board when we're doing a show and he takes you into his world because he has this whole script there for you to be able to have enough references to know what role and character that you're going to play and who you're going to be in the show and so those mood boards are very important so i'm 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 totally honored to be on your mood board <laughs> well it's, it's amazing and just to even just to even hear you talk about the galliano experience and 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 his actual what he actually did to build up to each show and you talk about creating these characters it's like for me, what you've done on all these carpets is you sh exactly what you just said. You showed all these different like aspects of yourself. Did you know that all these things like existed in you when you put it put these clothes on and decided to walk down the the runways? It's an outer body experience. I don't know who that girl is. She <laughs> looks like me. She sounds like me, but <laughs> because you know they bring out this character that you—it's a real dream, really. And 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 doing couture or working with these designers who actually put a lot of effort and energy into their stories, and that invites you into their world. So you dream with them, and right. you want to please them, and you want to become this this person that you once read about in the fairy tale book, you know, I, ah. I'm wearing a couture dress of $150,000. Of course, I'm going to become a character. <laughs> you know, this, is like, this is very, Bravo. very adventurous for me. So it becomes an adventurous moment. It's a passionate moment. 
and and they encourage you in such a beautiful way you hear them backstage which each girl that goes out they're encouraging her going wow look at her look at her so you're like okay i want to go out and do something <laughs> too, you know <laughs> well, so, well, yeah i i love that well speaking about just even just because that's that's kind of like the the final kind of step when you when you when you get to the runway. So how did, how did your first step start? Like, how did you get into the business? I got into the business. I entered a competition in Newark, New Jersey <laughs> um, for New Days Association. And it was a competition for, you know, people in the vicinity. And the prize was a trip to Paris and I wanted to go to Paris. <laughs> yeah, that's how it started. So it's you lit so Hotel. Oh years. my gosh, so it's kind of like it's it's the stories that you see them paint on the movies all the time. This lovely this lovely girl goes to a to a cat like to a contest and there you are. Yes. Were you yes. were you shocked? I was um well I studied it the year before. I went to go look at the competition the year before. And got then it, the following it. year, um John Blassigan, it's a New Day Association um competition that's for guys and girls. So there was like, uh, I think, 25 guys, 25 girls. And then you compete. You have two looks that you wear. And then at the end, the judges, which are people from like the black hair magazines and editors from Essence and different places would come and then choose a winner, a guy winner and a girl winner. And I was chosen. And that's how I ended up in Paris. That's really how I ended up in Paris. You know, like, I I feel like... I feel like we're kindred spirits because Paris, Paris is like, I've, I've, it's home. I'm, the, I'm the happiest there. It's, yeah. the, it's so amazing. So I'm the happy, and it, it, it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help that I get to go to all the couture shows in Paris. So it's a different kind of experience. It's very it's outer body. It's a dream. You're walking through the Louvre to go to your next show. I mean, come uh, on, just like. <laughs> <I'm>, come <laughs> so on. Do you remember your first? Do you remember your first? I'm going to really kind of dig into couture because, you know, a lot of the questions that I've been getting is like, you are, when people think of couture, you are couture. Like, they're like, oh, it's Deborah. Like, the reference, Deborah. Like, they're like, Deborah. So I want to kind of dig into it because it's a very particular, it's a very particular um, runway to walk and the designers are very particular about that person who can translate these very extreme extravagant smart chic works of art and do you remember your first your first show your first couture show my first couture show was for uh dior with a Gio casual Hattori. casual guys <laughs> casual she's doing dior guys <laughs> no but it was at the time the designer was Gio Franco Ferre. Oh, and, love uh, it. it was my very first show. Um, for me, the girls that I looked up to as I started getting into the business were girls like Katusha, mm. um, you know, um, girls from even New Jersey, from like Rhonda Johnson. These were girls that were like couture models. So I dreamt through them. And that's oh. why I wanted to do couture. Because I was like, oh, these girls are just so elegant and so long in the way that they move. It's just... It's 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 what I was doing in the Jersey circuit, and so that's what I was expecting to do in Paris. But Paris is a different model, you know how they go about being a model and what you do and expressing yourself has changed during the different eras. And so mm. when I first began with Dior with Gio Franco Ferre, after the show, um, a guy came up to me and said, "I'd like to take a picture with you," and he had on all this like. Um, British flags and all this punk rock looking uh, designs that I didn't quite understand at the time because I was very new in fashion. And I, was, I, I feel something coming. I feel something coming. <laughs> and it was John Galliano asking to take a picture with me backstage. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and my manager that was with me, I said, this guy wants to take a picture with me. And she says, take a picture with him. That's John Galliano, my dear. And I'm like, oh, okay, I don't know who he is at the time. So <laughs> then he becomes the designer the next season. And then that's where the story began. And then he had me in for the Maasai look with the corset and the necklace. And yes. Uh, yeah. magnif- ah, yes. Oh, magnifique. Oh, no. just It's it's like you ha- you are like, it's the dream. <laughs> it's oh, like, it's dream. literally the dream. And it still is a dream. It's always a dream because I get to work with some really talented, 
and amazing people. And they get to help me understand this body, this neck, this arms, this hand, this movement, you know, things that I didn't understand as a child. I didn't know a sleeve was supposed to go all the way down to the, <laughs> to the yeah. front or my pant leg should be all the way down to the floor because at the time, you know, they didn't have clothes that were really small, size zeros and size two did not exist at the time. Right. And so Couture showed me how clothes were supposed to fit. And wow. I mean, that was a dream. I was like, wow. It was educational for me. I mean, I learned a lot about myself. I love that. Through the clothing, through the way that it was draped, and the, the, you know, just the things that they requested me to do, Sam, telling me, oh, we love your hands. And I'm like, oh, really? You know, and so you <laughs> learn to like yourself through the images from other people. That's that magical. For me as well. That's magical. Because, you know, I think, I think in the industry that you're in, a lot of times we just see the, the superficialness of it all. And like a lot of people find themselves, you know, fighting against um, what they look like. And to hear you say that it did the reverse for you. It made you enjoy yourself. It made you like comfort yourself and, yeah. and enjoy, going back to just enjoying yourself even more. I think it's so profound to kind of hear that perspective. Speaking of perspectives, knowing that you tried on all these amazing creations did it change your style point of view did all of a sudden all this education did you go to paris from <laughs> one point one way and then all of a sudden now you're just like no that was a really bad decision i can't believe i used to wear that <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be late with you. <laughs> right. You know, it, of course, you have to be inspired and influenced by this design. There's no way to, once you know right, you don't go back to not knowing right. It's just, Bravo. it is what it is. And so I learned how to mix and match and not be afraid of mixing many colors or styles. And also just learning that, you know, whatever makes me feel good is where it really starts. You know, whether it looks weird to someone else, I don't care. It's what I felt yeah. like. And if I feel good in it, I'm going to wear it and I'm going to own it and be confident in that. And, you know, so some days you have more confidence than the other. And so I dress according to that. And so, well, I so said today I was the uh, Indian couture girl today. <laughs> I love it. I mean, this reminds me of that image that I, one of my favorite images of you is a Peter Lindbergh shoot when you had, you had all the tribal stuff on and you just were like, you, that, I mean, I, I mean, Deborah, like what's really annoying, what's really annoying is that every image of you, every time you decide to put your feet in a pair of shoes and make your way down the runway, it's iconic and it's like, it's it's out of this world and it's like it's it, it's the mad you constantly you constantly evoke the imagination from the designers every time i see you it's like this is what i'm sure they were at home like jotting away like you you become <laughs> the epitome of the muse and you know speaking of muses like galliano like you know like beyond 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 like your your relationship with that and everything that you every piece of fabric that you were wrapped in and then going down to like McQueen and that whole story of like that, like I, we, what are your, some of your most memorable moments from, from McQueen and Galliano and like even the Paco Rabanne moments that you did. I mean, I just can't even talk about it. Like oh, we could go on and on and on and on. It's just so <laughs> each one had, had a different, approach towards me and how they addressed my body and well, so uh, the queen was more about you know putting me in something that that was very fitted on my shoulders but also about a small waist and mm. um galliano was more romantic and and mm. and, and, and dreamlike and uh you know and mugler was more about the the silhouette and the <sighs> you know the hill and the the continuation down to the shoe all as one canvas. So, you know, each one, Paco Rabanne and the metal pieces that I wore for him. I mean, it was just, each designer has a different personality. So of course, naturally they're going to bring out a different personality within myself through wow. their creation and their designs. And so my role and my job, I'm conscious because it is a job. Yeah become what it is that they want from me and to put my flavor to it as well too. And so 
this is why every time I did something, I didn't know what I was going to do. It just happened. It was always improvised and spontaneous, but I got the script from them. But the rest was up to me to add whatever I wanted to that. And so I was happy to have that freedom, especially in the 90s, you just have that freedom. Whereas today, it's about just walking straight and being strong. Mm -hmm. and it's a very different approach today. So I'm fortunate to have grown into the business into the 90s and work with these amazing people and talents and then working with people today and seeing their own interpretation. But they they all have the, they do their homework. They know from the past. They know what I'm capable of doing. But today they want something maybe a little bit less, a little bit just more simple because that's their personality. And so yeah. they adjust to who I'm working with. That's, yeah, that's a, a professional. That's what you do. <laughs> yeah, I think for you know, I'm listening to you talk about the the past and and the present, and just thinking about even for me as a, a stylist, even like how different that approach was then as the approach is now. So if for for me, I could kind of I for me, I know the difference what what it's like then and now. What's the difference in the business that you see now, where, whether it be like the catwalk to just models and casting or just the business in general what do you actually see that's that has shifted for the best or for the worst or what you hope to to see in this business i would like to continue to see the diversity on the runway that's super important because during the time in the 90s i was often alone it was either you know, myself or Kiera or Alec Black is one of us that was being chosen for the show. And so we knew if one got it, the other two did not get it. So that was a very lonely moment. Um, it wasn't a, a moment of feeling like, oh, I'm fierce, I'm the chosen one. No, it was actually quite sad. And it, it was wow. not a moment for women to grow um, and, and to see more people like myself. And so today with the casting directors having a role in the business, they're now, uh, you know, higher diversity. And so that is very, very um, nice to see that. So when I do a show today, I'm not seeing, I'm not the only one. <laughs> a lot right. of me is people that looks like me, you know, these right. models that are extraordinary. They are so gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really, I love, I love to hear that. I love to hear that. And again, like, Deborah, the, the way that you're approaching this whole the talk is it's so positive and it's so uplifting and you're finding the silver lining in it all. And even the idea of like finally hearing someone saying it was lonely when you were there by yourself. It was lonely. Like you don't hear people talk about that and kind of dig into it. So again, again, I keep telling you your impact and, and, and what you're saying right now is is shifting and adjusting people's point of view and, and the planet, which I enjoy over all the fashion in the world, I enjoy the fact that someone is so divine as you also is planning and has this idea of shifting things and, and you want to be inclusive in it as well. So I really, I really kind of enjoy that because you don't get to hear that, that perspective. Um, so I have a question. <laughs> I have a question. Do you have did, did you, was there ever a moment, because you get to touch and try on and be with so many pieces of clothing, was there anything that you think about from your past was like, I wish, I wish they would have gave me that. <laughs> Is there anything, because I know there's so many people that are always like, oh, we love that look. Did you get to keep it? Did they let you have that? Like, you know, I hear these stories about, you know, with Azadine Ali and like he would just that the way he would pay the girls a lot of times that he would let them come back to the, the studio and they get to keep things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there was a time in fashion where you got paid with clothes a lot of times. Um, and and then you developed a, a relationship with the designer because that's when the designers were hiring the models and then it shifted to oh, stylists wow. hiring the models. So then that relationship that you had with the designer was actually more of a distance. And so that's where we start seeing the change of the runway, the pattern and how the girls were walking. Um, and so when it was with the designers and I had this close relationship with them, yes, anything I wanted, I could possibly have. And so for example, McQueen, um, when he found out that I was getting married during the couture season, because my mom said, get married during the couture so I can see the shows and come to your <laughs> Smart mom, smart mom. <laughs> 
And so um, I didn't have time to prepare for the wedding the way that I like to. And so um, McQueen found out and basically um, Andre Liantelli contacted uh, John Galliano and said, John Galliano, Deborah would like a dress. And he's like, oh, I would love to make a dress for her, but it's super busy. I'll make her honeymoon outfit. So then McQueen just did the entire white collection for Givenchy, uh, his very first collection. So he says, tell her to come in. She can have whatever she wants. <laughs> so, I know, I was like that. Wait, so, so you, had, you, had, you, had, you had McQueen for the, for the big day and you had Galliano for... For the honeymoon. But I, I never went to give my offer for Galliano for the honeymoon because I couldn't... I was still could not believe that these people were giving me these couture pieces. I was just... First of all, McQueen... You're just, um, it's rebooting for you. There you go. You're there back. You go. You're back. You see me? <laughs> yeah, Sorry. you're back. You're I back. turned off my alarm. <laughs> and so McQueen ended up giving me three wedding dresses. Um, two of them, uh, I got to, no, I got to keep one. The other one went into a museum and the other one was too transparent to wear in the church. So I didn't take that one. And so Therefore, I didn't really need another outfit for the honeymoon because I ended up wearing one of the queen. Oh. And then Terry <laughs> Mugler dressed my husband in his suit. And so it was like the fashion world came together for my wedding on this day. My okay, so I'm going to leave. <laughs> I'm going to walk out. <laughs> See, Wait, get this this is... Hold up, hold up. It is nothing. My wedding reception was at the place of Papa Raban who owned a bar at a time and he volunteered his space for the reception. And so I, that, that was my wedding coming it's together. A movie. Backstage, it was a movie. Flowers while I'm getting makeup done for the next show. <laughs> it was, it was a movie. It was, it was a movie. It was a come together. It was so emotional for me because they they did it. <laughs> they said yes. Okay, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take something so like I I'm gonna be so deep about something because this made that made me emotional. You just solidified that all dreams can come true in a space that has always someone has always said it's not for you. But meanwhile, you had you had your choice. <laughs> you had your I choice. <laughs> I had a choice, and I oh still was in this for the choice. I was like, "Really? You sure?" <laughs> the now funny thing is, know. I can't. I mean, I'm friends with I'm friends with all these houses, and like, I'm somewhere like, so um, can I get that? <laughs> can I get that? They're like, "Yes, you can," but I'm also gonna need it back, and you still may have to pay fifty percent. I'm like, "What?" For like a celebrity <laughs> wedding, I'm like, "What?" But like to hear that is just like that's that's almost kind of unheard of in today's time. Like to be able to say, and no one having ego, like Galliano being like, fine. And McQueen being like, fine. And then Paco being like, fine. It's like no ego, which no, was, it was really- no ego. It was, a, it was a unity. We were a family. We were really together as a family. We were all doing what we had to do, but we were broke, huh? Don't get it twisted. We were doing <laughs> couture and wearing $60,000 dresses, but we were still like not making money yet. And so, but we were creating art and that's all that mattered. We were together expressing ourselves and living our dream because it is a dream. And to be able to, to be in that energy around with other like-minded people, it just, it just solidifies what it is you're doing and saying it's okay. You're on a good path. Continue to do what you're doing, you know. Okay, so I I, need, believe it. I mean, you need to do a podcast. You need to do something. <laughs> you have to do something because, you know, I know how discreet you are, and you're very kind of like you 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 respect the art, and this is a job for you. But what you have said in this very small time is is so iconic and so epic. Oh, he's have in this small time what you've done is you, you've shifted the perspective. You brought the in in this really dark time, you've bought you brought the sunshine back in fashion for me. Because in the space where you can't do anything, the the collections have stopped, you know, talking to people like Pierpaolo and like 
um, Vera Wang, where like, it's really interesting right now what's happening, but to hear this perspective and, 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 and to feel the sunshine that you're speaking, we need to hear that right now. So you might want to do a podcast <laughs> and I, cause I need to hear it because it's like, and again, for just, a just as a, a black gay man in the business and you hearing, hearing like the more intimate stories of, of, of your of your success and how you work through things it all it does is constantly make me keep wanting to fight and I and I, I, can, I see the light yes. so just to hear it and to see this woman that was on my <laughs> on my boards mm -hmm. like the real life thing like the real life thing and you have it's so much depth and it's so much joy and and I, I keep saying your perspective is so new and it's so fresh but it makes sense because your perspective, with everything that you touch was still so new and still so fresh and still so modern. So Deborah, I, I mean, <laughs> thank you so it's much. It's pretty iconic. Like you're like, <laughs> it's like, I, I remember having some really tough days and thinking about things and I would go and look at, um, what, what is this? Tim, Tim Blanks. I think that's the name. He used to have the thing called fashion file. Yes. And I would Google that and I would go back to um, <laughs> images of you and it would kind of make me feel good. I'm like, inspiration, yeah, fuck it up, I can do it, you know? <laughs> so it was just kind of to see how like, just how badass you were about it. And, and what's, what's really interesting is to kind of hear you always say like, you didn't even think of it that way. You were just like, okay, lights, camera, action, gotta go. Like, yeah, so to hear I, that I is- I had fun with it. It was really, it, it was a fun thing for me too, but also it was just me needing to kind of make myself notice as well too, because I didn't do as many shows as my um, colleagues did. And so a lot of times that one image or that two shows that I would do thank God for the Ebony's and Essence because they would take those pictures and, you know, put it in their issues every week or wow. every year. And so therefore that one show felt like I did 20, but I only did oh. like two or three shows, you know? Yeah. And so because I was doing so few shows and I felt like I should be doing more shows, I gave everything I got on those few shows that I did. Yeah. My, well, my logic was I'm going to make sure they, remember me so that they can hire me for more shows. And so yeah, I always yeah. went in with a attitude of a little bit of like, you know, hey, notice me because I don't know why I'm not doing more work. I'm here. Right. I'm in Paris. Why can't I do this show? Why can't I do that? And so, um, yeah, that was my thought pattern every time I did a show. I needed to make sure I was like, notice. <laughs> well, it's so funny is <laughs> like, even Speaking of like now with your work right now, I was going through um, I was going through the Vogue app and I was just kind of getting inspired. And again, you popped up in my life. So I went to look at a collection and there you were. And I was like, she hasn't stopped, but still the, the collections and the, the things that you decide to show up for are, are the brands that are still like art based and talent based. Like your point of view still is so, it's so pure and it's so smart. Like the, um, the collection that I was looking at was Everlay, Everlay. And I was like, oh, and I was just like, I seen you and you was like a profile. And I was like, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. I was like, no. But even now to see, to see like you have transcended the idea of like, it's supposed to stop at this, you know, in the, and you can speak to this more than I can, but like typically what they say is like after a certain age for a model, it's done, you know? And here you are, like you have, you are, you know, you went through the whole situation and now you're still standing. And in the cool brands that like the cool people, like the cool people want to get their hands on. And there you are front and center still. Like I'm grateful for that. I'm happy to be able to work with the cool brands, but you know, it also, <laughs> it comes with, you know, finally figuring out how to find the right person to manage me. You know, that wow. was a, See, a that's another big, big thing. part People of the business, you know. And yeah. so I, I have great management that actually, you know, guides me and helps me to really understand what I'm doing and how to focus it on my business as a business and not as just a girl that's just dreaming of, oh, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. But mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. a both balance. I mean, we can dream. But it's also a business and you got to make some money and bring it home and pay the bills because, <laughs> you know, that couture dress is not going to pay the bills. The well, and that's in, in place of the money. That's nice to have those clothes, but I still have bills to pay. 
And yeah. so in the end, um, I've managed to be able to to understand the business, the business. Mm -hmm. having better management as well. So you know, I'm it's really when I do a lot of these conversations. Shout out to a red lot models. Of, <laughs> red love red models. So the funny thing is, I do a, a lot of the questions that come across. Like people are so you know the obvious the obvious thing is like we're so in awe of the, the beauty of the work and the beauty of you, but I always tell anyone that I come across, I'm like, you need to know the business though. The business is very important because you can actually enjoy the clothes and all those things because those, those situations, they, 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 it's very quick, but then at the end of the day, you still have to go home yep. and you still want your home to kind of feel like those environments that you're leaving. Oh, yes. um, so it's, you know what I mean? So it's like, you yes. think of that. So I'm always like, I tell everyone it's, a lot of times you have to look at it, it's bottom line. What's the bottom line? And the bottom line is like, I still have to be able to take care of myself after I leave this fantastic Versace show. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yeah, so Versace, oh gosh, I'm so happy uh, to done his last show. Uh, oh, that was a dream, that show, that was everything. And it was just, that's a whole nother story in itself. I don't know how much time you have, but that was just a dream. I would that love to hear that. I would love to hear Johnny's story. <laughs> I would I love. I to do work for Gianni Versace. And so I ended up doing that um, because his samples came back too small. And so they had to cancel all the girls that they normally use and find smaller models. And, in, and I found this out through Lori Samuels. <laughs> she told me she had an option for Versace. I was like, huh, really? And then I called my agent. I was like, my friend has an option for Versace. I want to go. <laughs> and so I got in and I met him. And it was like love at first sight. I swear to God. I mean, it was just, I was just like, I love you. <laughs> and, and it felt like he was saying the same because not only did I try on clothes, he had press in the next room. And he's like, I want you to wear the clothes for the press. And so I went and I presented the clothes to the press. And they were like, what is your name? And I said, Deborah Shaw. And they were like, okay, Deborah. And he's like, no, that's not how you spell it. It's D-E-B-R-A. You know, Versace was like <gasps> really adamant about it. And so he was like, a, he, he took me by the hand at that moment, at that show. And, and at the finale, he says, I love you. He whispers this in my ear. And I'm just like, <laughs> it Deborah, was I am a done. dream for I me. <laughs> it was a dream I'm for me. You don't understand. I was just, it was so emotional. I just got married. I'm now doing Versace, the show, the shows that I've always, Versace, Valentino, Galliano, Dior, Mugler, they're all happening all at the same time at my wedding and, and my family's in town. And now we're going to do our honeymoon in Rome and meet Mr. Versace for doing the show on the, in Rome. You know, they do the couture show in Rome. Yes. Yeah. So my husband and I were like, let's go to Rome, do that show for Versace. And then we'll spend our honeymoon in Rome. And then, you know, as I was about to leave the house, I was told not to go. My agent called me and then that's when the unfortunate happened. But um, wow, it was a very emotional so. season for me, that, that entire couture season it was very emotional. And um, that is something I will always cherish. Just, I have a personal story with all the designers I work with today, currently, and from the past, but I will always cherish that story because that was somebody. Wow, that was, like, that's I a beautiful memory. That's such yeah. a lovely memory to yeah. have of Johnny. Like, I I remember me just being able watching Johnny and seeing how often and how in love he was with brown girls, which I always adored. He loved brown girls, and I I, I love that. And even today, like I had my <clears throat> my I just did I just did an Oscar run, and I got to have a full situation with his sister Donatella and they I could only imagine like their their relationship and their spirit because she's so like she was so fun and she was so light and she kind of just you know I was like Donatella I want to do this with the dress I want to do that and she was like she grabbed me by my face she was like do whatever you do whatever you want me to do and it was just like you know to 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 know that those type of people still exist, those type of designers still exist who have a bit, who still have that heart and still the connection. Um, but that's, it's, it's we're really- We're in this together, like, we're in this together. We're all, yeah. we're, we're all creating, we all want to have something to say. And, you know, and so we're in this together and in this moment that we're living in right now, this solitude and this, this challenging moment, 
it's about reflecting and, and, and understanding that we're in this together. Let's support each other. Let's encourage each other. Um, let's uplift each other. You know, life is already hard. We don't need to, you know, negativity. Let's, let's continue to move forward. This too shall pass. We have to Bravo. move forward. We have to understand what that's about. Meditation is important. Um, spiritual person. I mean, whatever you need to do to understand what this solitude is about, it is about something. It's not about not doing anything. It's about reflecting. And it's important that we understand that. And um, when we begin to move into our next uh, world, whatever that will be, because what we've mm -hmm. known it to be is not going to exist anymore. It's shifting. Everything yeah. Change. And so yeah. we have to be ready. We have to be ready, mind, body, and soul. And so I love that. So, so fashion, I have, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's, we, we, again, your perspective, your light the sunshine that you speak that's from now on anybody asks me about you i'm like she speaks sunshine what's her language sunshine it's just good um i have one last question um and i'm gonna let you enjoy your day with your hoops your <laughs> your braid and your hat what are you doing to stay creative during this lockdown that we're in as I said, meditation is really important for me right now because I didn't have time to, um, I didn't make time for those things. I was always busy and, and going for the next job and the next job because I'm just so happy to work, to be mm -hmm. quite honest. And so, you know, all those things, I, they had to wait. But yeah. the reality is, is that they're very important and I, I'm sleeping. I'm finally sleeping more than four hours. Um, you know, yeah. I'm, me too. I'm, cooking. Yeah. I'm cooking again. <laughs> I'm not doing that, Deborah, but I'm definitely sleeping. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm I'm having a relationship with myself. And wow. um, as I tell, you know, people all the time, you know, I mentor to the younger generations, um, you know, models that's entering into the business. I, I mentor to them. And, you know, it's it, it took me a long time to like who I am. <laughs> And wow. I like who I am right now. And wow. so now I'm having that relationship with it and, and getting to accept it flaws and all, you know, and doing what I have to do to to continue to be the best me that I can be in whatever well, I, I do, and to be passionate about it and not just do it just for the money, but really have a yeah. passion about it. I love it. I, I'm so, I'm so excited i don't know how i'm going to go to sleep tonight after this <laughs> i'm going to constantly be thinking about it um well i didn't I sleep have... last night knowing i had this interview with you. Oh, really? <laughs> well i did girl but i i am again i am i'm so fortunate that you decided to do this and i'm so excited that you have allowed to have people ask questions and you are allowing yourself to give out information because that's the one thing that's so priceless and you you can't you, you I, I just can't thank you enough for just doing it and, and giving yourself to us very with not being selfish at all and just giving that sunshine that we all need and i'm beyond beyond grateful and i'm so so thankful that you. you did so much that you didn't even realize you did to help this little black boy. You don't even realize <laughs> it. You don't even realize it. It's, I was, I, I have, I have, I have, um, an, um, I, I never forget that I brought a photo of you <laughs> to a designer that I will not name. And I was like, I basically want this. And the designer looked at me, he said, Jason, <laughs> it's Deborah. It's not the dress. I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, there you have it. I was like, okay, never mind. So, I, so I'm gonna leave on that note. It's Whoa. Deborah, guys. It is her. It is not the dress. It is the human. It is the human that decides to wrap herself in these garments. And I am, again, I can't say it enough. I am so grateful. I come across and I work with some of the most amazing people. And I'm so glad that you have come into my life and I can add you to the group of impactful, sensational, iconic, world shifting women in my life. So I am grateful. Thank you. Thank so you so, so much.
It's been a pleasure. Thank you for reaching out to me. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care. Have fun. Love that hat too, by the way. <laughs> Bye. Sorry. It's sensual. Sense of being love it. I love it. Bye. Bye. Take care. <laughs>